Today we're going to be talking about the Watts family. Have you heard of them? Stick around. Okay, so Christopher Watts and Shanann Watts were locals of Spring Lake, Aberdeen, North Carolina. Um, they met in 2010 and they got married on November 3rd of 2012. Now they had two daughters, Bella Watts, who was born December 17th, 2013, and Celeste, who they called Cece, who was born on July 17th, 2015. They lived in a five bedroom home, big, gorgeous house, in Frederick, Colorado, which they purchased in 2013. Now, Chris worked at a petroleum plant while Shanann was an independent representative selling a product called Thrive. At the time of her death, she was 15 weeks um, pregnant with their son, who they were going to be naming Nico. Now, the whole story begins when Shanann returned home from a business trip to Arizona at about 1.48 a.m. on August 13, 2018. After being driven home by her best friend and also her colleague, her name was Nicole Atkinson. Um, Chris was at home with the girls that whole time, had them through the weekend. Later that day, um, Shanann and the girls were reported missing by her friend Nicole, who became concerned when Shanann missed a scheduled OBGYN appointment. So she was supposed to have an appointment um, to check on her pregnancy and everything. She missed that appointment, it was very unlike her. She was failing to return text messages, phone calls, um, and then after she missed a business meeting, that's when Nicole went to uh, the Watts home. And this was about 12, 10 p.m. When the doorbell and the knocks went unanswered, nobody was answering, um, that's when Nicole notified Chris, who was at work. Um, and then she also called the Frederick Police Department. An officer arrived to conduct a welfare check at about 1.40, so it took him. A mm, little over an hour to get there, and Chris arrived home to talk with the officers, discuss ways to locate his family. Um, he was saying that they had gotten into an argument. He wasn't sure where she went, that she had went, left with the girls. Now, since he did give the police officers the, the okay to do the welfare check um, and search the house, there was no signs of Shanann or the girls. The searchers discovered her purse containing her phone, her keys, her car was still there, which concerned um, Nicole a lot because the girl's car seats were in there and she just swore down that her friend would never leave anywhere without the girl's car seats. It was also still in the garage. Um, also what was found was her wedding ring and it was found on the master bed. Now the next day the FBI got involved um, in the Colorado um, Bureau of in Investigation joined the investigation the next day as well, which was August 14th. Chris initially told police he had no idea where Shanann, Bella, Celeste, where they might be. He hadn't seen his wife since 5.15 a.m. on the 13th when he left for work. Um, he gave interviews to Denver stations, to some of the uh, radio or some of the news stations there outside of his house. He was pleading for the return, um, acting concerned, I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> investigators with cadaver and search dogs could be heard on the property during the interview. So they're actively in this search while he's having these interviews with the news. Now, police were starting to get a little suspicious of Chris. Now, that first day when she went missing and the girls went missing, they went to a neighbor's house who had um, like a, a security camera outside and they looked on the security camera and Chris got real agitated. Not agitated, but you could tell he was nervous, crossing his arm. I mean, you could look at the interviews um, on YouTube or online. You could just tell that he wasn't acting like a normal grieving husband should. So it wasn't really a surprise come uh, the next day, which is August 15th, that he was arrested. And according to police, um, he failed a polygraph test. And what's crazy about that whole situation is he agreed to take this polygraph test. You even see in the interview the lady like, now this would be silly if you actually committed this crime and you're taking this polygraph test because you're not going to pass it, right? You know that, right? And he's like, yeah, I know. And this dude still fails the polygraph test. Now, um, after he failed the polygraph test, he did confess to 
uh, murdering Shanann. And he asked to speak to his father before confessing. So his dad is the one that he actually confesses to. Um, you could hear it in like the room because the, the mics are still on whether anybody's in there or not. And according to the affidavit, he was having an affair with a woman named Nicole. It's not the same Nicole. It's not Shanann's best friend. It's a different Nicole. Um, and he claimed... And claimed he asked for a separation from Shanann. Now, during the investigation, he claimed that he strangled the girls in response to his request for separation in a fit of rage. Um, he, sh he strangled her and then transported the bodies to remote oil storage site where he worked. Now, he gave different... First, for a while, he just... He actually claimed that Shanann killed the girls and then his response was that he killed her that's what he actually confessed to first and as the investigators dug more and asked him more questions and interrogated him more he finally admitted that at first he strangled the girls then after he thought they were dead he went to Shanann who was sleeping she had no defensive wounds or anything so they believe that he drugged her because I believe that there were drugs in her system so they believe that he drugged her and then not, not like heavy duty drugs or anything, but he basically sedated her, helped her go to sleep, and then he strangled her. And then it was said that Bella woke up and seen it. And that's when he realized that he had not killed the girls because Cece ended up getting two. So at this point, he's rolling up the body and all that. But I'll get into all that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so he, he basically is saying that he killed the girls twice, or at least he tried to. So he had plenty of time to rethink this through, um, and he is just, he didn't do that. So it's, it's horrible. But uh, back to the story, sorry, I just wanna make sure you guys had that little tip of information. Now, Chris and this Nicole girl, they began having an affair in late June of 2018. Um, it was approximately, approximately two months before the Watts family went missing. The two first connected while working at the um, Petroleum Corporation uh, in Colorado, which is where Chris was working at the time, the same location where the bodies of his wife and children were found. And although Watts maintains his innocent at first, he later admits that his relationship and desire to start a new life with Nicole led him to murder his family. Back on August 13th, the day the Watts family had disappeared, he um, had texted Nicole and told her his family was gone, in quotes. Uh, he said that Shanana had taken the girls to a play date and never returned. And according to Nicole, Watts appeared casual, didn't show any emotion, when talking about his missing family, which she found to be odd, as any of us would. Um, it wasn't until she read the news that she supposedly um, realized that, Watt, that, that Chris had been lying to her this whole time. Now, I say supposedly because I... I just, I don't, I, I personally don't buy it. I mean, it, tell me what your thoughts are in the, in the comments down below, what you guys think about Nicole, if you feel like she was just innocent and just, um, a victim in this as well. I, I truly feel like she may have played some roles or helped because they did a lot of talking back and forth, a lot of talking. And she was shady to me as far as she didn't really admit the kind of relationship that they had to investigators in the beginning. Um, so that seemed a little shady. But anyways, back to, y'all can let me know what you think. Now, although Nicole told Watts she wanted to take things slowly, they began um, having a physical relationship in early July. And it wasn't long before Nicole was contemplating marriage with this guy. So mind you, she's only known him for two months, knows he has a wife and kids, supposedly doesn't know about this baby but thinks that he's leaving his wife so they're she thinks she's about to marry him like that's just mind-blowing to me I just don't believe that seemed like she was ready to step in you know as soon as they were gone without even supposedly knowing that anything was going to happen to him now according to the Washington Times investigators looked through Nicole's Google search history as they should have following Chris's arrest um, her history contained phrases like, um, like searching in Google saying, man, I'm having an affair with, says he will leave his wife. And then there was another search that said, marrying your mistress. 
and as well as some online shopping like lots and lots of pages of wedding dress shopping and according to the Denver Post um, Nicole believed Watts was a thoughtful soft-spoken man who was at the end of his divorce proceedings when they first met um, okay <laughs> I mean I, I guess I guess that's why you need to get to know people before you marry them tip number one so Chris had told her his divorce was finalized at the end of July and she didn't realize he was still married until after the news broke that Shanann, Celeste, and Bella were missing. Now, again, watch her interviews, listen to her story, see, I mean, take what you want from that. I personally don't, I feel like she played some kind of role that she knew something. She may not have physically did it, but I feel like she knew something. But anyways, back to the story. Now, after Chris finally confessed, he told him where the bodies were. The authorities located the bodies of the Watts family on the property of his former employer, which was the petroleum plant, and that was on August 16th. Um, he was fired on the 15th, <laughs> and the day of uh, he was fired the 15th, the day of his arrest. The girls' bodies were found hidden in the oil tanks that were there. Um, and then Shanann and Nico were buried in a shallow grave nearby. Now he said the reason that he put them in these tanks was to try and get them as far away from Shanann as possible. If that's not sick, I don't know what is. So, I, this story was just very horrific. I have children, I have three of them, they're little. I just cannot wrap my brain around hurting my children, that's just, mind-blowing to me now okay now this case moves pretty fast it didn't take them long to figure everything out because by August 21st Watts was charged with five counts of first-degree murder including an additional one count per child cited as death of a child who has not yet attained 12 years of age and the defendant was in a position of trust Unlawful termination of a pregnancy was another one, and three counts of tampering with a deceased human body. So for killing and then moving Shanann's body. Um, he was denied bail at first, court appearance. At a later hearing, his bail was set at $5 million, and him being required to put 15% down to release. Now, in an interview with Dr. Phil, I just wanna kinda throw this info out there. I kinda touched on it earlier. But um, Chris's lawyer claimed that he confessed to killing Shanann after an argument regarding the divorce. Um, during the murder, Bella walked in, um, like I said, and then he told her that Shanann was sick, loaded Shanann's body in the car, uh, without the, and then the girls without the car seats in the back of his work truck. Uh, he later smothered them with their favorite blanket, one after the other, and then that's when he put them in those tanks. Now, for the sentencing, Chris pleaded guilty to the murders on November 6th. The death penalty was not put forward by the district attorney on the request of Shanann's family, who do not wish for any other further deaths to occur, which I applaud her family. That's amazing. I can't imagine. But at the same time, I feel like sometimes death is too easy me personally that's something else you guys can talk about down in the comments as well how do you feel about the death sentence how do you feel about lethal injection or any of that but anyways back to the story um now her family was supportive of the decision to accept the plea deal and then on november 19th he was sentenced to five life sentences three consecutive and two concurrent without the possibility of parole so he received an additional 48 years for the unlawful termination of Shanann's pregnancy and 36 years for the three charges of tampering with deceased bodies. Um, after this, he had his $5 million bail revoked and was immediately um, remanded to custody. On December 3rd, 2018, Watts was moved to an out-of-state location due to security concerns. Um, on December 5th, 2018, he arrived at the Dodge Correctional Institution. It's a maximum security prison in Wisconsin to, consent, to continue serving his life sentence. So that is the horrible, horrible story of the Watts family, um, how this 
loving this uh, this man who appeared to be very loving. Shanann did lots and lots of uh, social media things, so she was always putting herself, her family out there. Um, he was always in videos, always seemed bubbly and happy. Maybe he wasn't. Obviously, he wasn't. I mean, so that's the story of the Watts. So leave your comments down below. Tell me what you guys think. Have you heard of this one before? But that wraps up today's stories with Stephanie. I hope you enjoyed this story. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you learned something new. Don't forget to you guys next time. Bye.